Uh, like I mentioned, my name is Tony Sigmini. I've helped here at the church for uh, six years now. I've done everything in the youth ministry part here, but I, a big part of my job now working at the church and the college here is helping direct the Teens for Christ Bible Club ministry. And uh, we have 40 different Bible clubs. We're in the middle schools and high schools of Knox County. Uh, we're in the juvenile detention center. We're in nine different boys and girls Bible clubs, uh, uh, boys, nine, nine, nine different boys and girls clubs. Um, and then we also are in the Tennessee School of the Deaf. And we also have a homeschool Bible club here at the college that meets once a week. And then we also have a Bible club in our private school here. And so uh, the clubs are a little different, give you just a little background of what we do. In the schools we're in, we usually meet once a week, uh, whether it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. And it's usually in the morning, and it's usually right before school starts. And so that's our Bible clubs at the schools. Um, in the boys and girls clubs, we have uh, Bible clubs that usually last a little bit longer, but they're in the afternoons. And then Tennessee School for the Deaf, we actually go there Wednesday evening and have a Bible club there. The Juvenile Detention Center, we go on Sunday afternoons and have a meeting. And then our um, uh, homeschool Bible club that meets here at the college facility is on Thursday afternoons. And so that's kind of a little description of our um, um, public school ministry, Bible club ministry in the different schools. And so hope that you'll keep that in mind there. Let me give you just kind of three points here, and then we'll go over this. Our last point we'll spend the most time. but. Uh, give you three things if you're taking notes that I hope that will be a help to you. Uh, number one, I want to give you statistics about young people in our country. Number two, I want to take you to a scripture passage. If you want to go and turn there, 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9, we'll read that. And then number three, I want to talk to you about starting a Bible club in your school and just uh, really 10 ideas that I hope that will be a help to you. So, Number one, we're talking about statistics, and these are things that I've read and studied and people have shared with me. I wanted to share them with you, but um, some things that are really staggering if you want to just make a note of them. But in our country, we have over 308 million people in America. Uh, in the state of Tennessee, there's 6 million people, over 6 million people. In the county that you're in right now, Knox County, there's 420,000 people. And in more specifically... Uh, this past school year, there were over 57,000 middle school and high school, I mean, school-age children. That's elementary, middle school, and high school. And then in the middle schools and high schools that we're in, there were 29,109 students that were enrolled in one of our middle schools and high schools. Uh, with that being said, you're saying, well, that applies to you. Let me give you some things uh, about our country. 70 million people in our country are under the age of 18 years old. That's a lot of people, 70 million people under the age of 18. There's 25 million students or more uh, in middle schools and high schools in our country. And this is the, uh, the statistic that I wanted to leave with you. Out of those 25 million uh, middle school and high school students, 88% of teenagers never go to church anywhere. 88% of teenagers in our country never go to church anywhere. So what's the point, the purpose of these statistics? Here's my thought to you. If there are 88% of teenagers in our country that don't go to church anywhere, there's a good chance they're not hearing the gospel and hearing the truth. And so if they're not coming to your church and to your youth group and to your youth activity, then how are we going to reach them? Here's the thought. You have to go to where they are. You have to go to their territory, you have to go to their turf, and you have to go and reach them. And so that's the purpose of our uh, Bible club ministries in the schools. Uh, the scripture passage we come to is 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9. The Bible says this, For a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. For a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. I'd like to tell you that here are, you know, point one, point two, point three to start a uh, Bible club ministry in the schools nearby, near your church, in your county. And it's pretty simple, but it's not simple. Uh, there are a lot of struggles. Uh, there are a lot of obstacles that you have to overcome. And so there, it's not simple. And the Bible says this, when a great door, for a great door and effectual is open to me and there are many adversaries. Uh, our pastors uh, mentioned this before. When you have opportunities and open doors, you will have obstacles. And so I just kind of want to leave that with you. Uh, as you try to go back and think about preparing and planning and starting a Bible club, you're going to face some obstacles. I was just talking to a youth director down in Florida yesterday, and um, he said, Brother Tony, uh, I, I've been there for so many years, and every, every day I drive to the church, I drive by this high school, and I prayed every day trying to get a Bible club started. 
and I did everything I could, and it seemed like nothing was working. And he was really working hard. He was telling me all the things he was doing. And then finally, uh, he kind of almost gave up on it, thought that it was impossible. And out of the blue, somebody randomly calls the church and says, I know that you have a big outreach in your church, and we're trying to get something started in this school with a Bible club. Would you like to help? And uh, it's kind of unique, but uh, it's not easy. So that's something to keep in mind. I believe it was Dr. Bob Jones Sr. says, the door of opportunity swings on the hinges of opposition. And so as you try to launch out and uh, start a Bible club in the schools there, you are going to face a few obstacles, but it's not impossible. And so my third point we come to is this. How do you start? How do you start? Um, I've written just 10 things down here that I think are just basics. And some of you have talked to some of your youth leaders and I'd love to talk to you a little bit more personally, too, and you're more than welcome to call me, and I'd like to give you some ideas and help you get things started there. But what are some things to keep in mind? I've just uh, jotted 10 things down here that would help maybe in starting. Number one, probably the most obvious, is to pray about it. Luke chapter 10, the Bible says in verse number two, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the labors are few. And the next thing it says what? Pray. Pray ye the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth labors. I think what you should probably start doing, especially if you have in mind of starting a Bible club ministry in the schools nearby, is pray about it. Not just you pray about it, but get people in your church to pray about it. Get people that are interested in, in the schools and in what's going on and have a special prayer meeting. Probably one of the, uh, the things in our church, in our college, that's probably most helpful with our Bible club ministry is that we have not just myself that's interested, but in every Bible club we have a church sponsor they go there, they pray for that club, they are connected with that club. And so every Sunday evening at 5.30 before the church service, we have a prayer meeting together. We just pray for the school year, we pray for the school week, we pray for the different needs, but we get people together and praying. And I would really say that uh, the work that's going on here that we have with our Teens for Christ Bible Club ministry is not something that one person has just worked up and got it done, but we've got a lot of people together to pray about it. And so I want to challenge you, pray about uh, the opportunity, pray that God will open doors, pray that God will give you favor. Number two, Understand the goal. What is the goal in having a Bible club ministry? Here's the goal. It's a means of getting the gospel to those who may never hear it. That's the purpose. We're trying to get the gospel to those who may never hear it. The goal is not to triple the size of your youth group, and the goal is not really for church membership. As a matter of fact, when we go to these Bible clubs, we never mention Temple Baptist Church. Uh, we say we come and we're part of Teens for Christ Bible Clubs and we're here to help and reach and give out the gospel. And so that's the purpose. We're trying to go into the schools and go into the different places and we're trying to give the gospel. And so I hope that you keep that in mind. Now through that, God will give you open doors and God will give you favor with people. Uh, we've had a young man, I remember. Um, he was actually at the public school library and one of our workers was there, saw teenagers and just struck up a conversation with him and uh, found out his name and said, have you been involved in a Bible club before at your school? And uh, he said, I haven't heard about that. Gave him some information. He came to a special rally that we had, uh, made a profession of faith. Uh, th through that, we were able to follow up uh, the school, uh, uh, making sure that he had assurance of his salvation. He didn't have a church to attend. And we said, well, can we recommend a church to you? He eventually came to our church, uh, saved, baptized, answered the call to preach, and just a few weeks ago was preaching in our youth department. And that was all through our um, public school ministry and our Bible clubs. And so now that took a, a lot of work to get to that point, but that's not the ultimate goal. We're not just trying to get kids into our youth group, and we're not just getting people to join our church. It's really the purpose of sharing the gospel, and so I hope you keep that in mind. Uh, having a Bible club, the goal is a means of getting the gospel to those who may never hear it. And I hope that you'll keep it in mind. Uh, number three about starting a Bible club. Uh, every school district is a little different. Every place is a little different. Every city, every town's a little different. So here's number three. Do your research. Um, there's a class that I help teach here at the college uh, about Teens for Christ Bible Clubs. And I, our first project that I give out to the students is that uh, pick a place in the country just randomly. Uh, find out the information that you need at that school or in that county to start a club, maybe not specifically a Bible club, but call and get information. So if you were to think of a place in West Virginia uh, in, in the surrounding schools, maybe contact a school and just say, I'm just trying to do a little survey. Uh, uh, who's in charge of your extracurricular activities? Who's in charge of your clubs at your schools? Uh, you know, if there's a drama club, a chess club, uh, what's, what's the regulations and rules of starting a club? And so find out some information. And uh, the administrator or the assistant principal, they'll give you some information. They'll say, well, in order for you to start a club, these are the requirements. And there you can at least uh, have some knowledge 
about what to do and what not to do. And then from there, they may even tell you you have to contact the county, the school board, and they may give you a few more details um, about what it takes to start a club. And so do your research, number three. Number four, uh, this is something that's very important. I'll spend a little time here, but know the law. What is the law? Uh, let me give you just a few things here. Uh, number one, um, underneath the law, uh, know the First Amendment. Here's what the First Amendment says, that state schools should not teach religion, but they should not prevent the free expression of religion. That's the First Amendment. Uh, it talks about the establish, Establishment Clause and also the Exercise Clause. We won't go in detail there, but government cannot establish a religion, but also government cannot prohibit the free religious expression. And so that's something to keep in mind. Number two, underneath um, the law, understanding the law, uh, this is probably the foundational document. If you don't get anything from this little session, a little lecture here, is um, get this important uh, legal part here, the legal base, the foundational doc doc document. 1984, the Equal Access Act was passed. The in 1984, the Equal Access Act was passed. I have a copy of it. I didn't bring it, um, but there's a lot of information there. But the Equal Access Act basically says this. Are you ready? If a school provides an open door for any extracurricular activity or group, then religious groups have the same Equal Access Act. Did you get that? 1984, the Equal, the Equal Access Act. If a school provides an open door for any extracurricular activity or group, then religious groups have the same Equal Access Act. So, for example, you're at a school. Um, I'm just thinking of all sorts of random clubs that I hear of in, in these schools. Uh, you have the beta club. You have the chess club. You have the drama team. You have the name another club in a school. The what? The more age? Four age. What is that? I don't think I know that. Oh, okay, yeah. Four H. What does it stand for? Do you know? No, it just that's what it's called. But what's that? Oh, that's smart guy here. But there's a lot of clubs in schools. You get my point. Uh, the golf club or. If there's a club in a school, you have the right, because of the Equal Access Act, also to have a Bible club. So it's just another extracurricular activity at that school, so keep that in mind. And here's another um, uh, legal part that you can understand. In 1991, there was a court case, the Westside Community Schools versus Mergens, M-E-R-G-E-N-S. -E -E and this was in uh, Omaha, Nebraska, I believe, in 1991. There was a court case. Uh, the West Side High School would not allow this teenage girl. She was a senior. I believe her name was Brittany. I could be off. Um, but uh, her last name was Mergens. Uh, she wanted to start a Bible club in 1990, and the school there would not allow her. And so this, they took this to case in 19, 1991. And so that really is the big court case that allows and, and is the kind of vital part of allowing religious clubs into the school. And so when that uh, was approved, that gave us permission, and so back in 1991, we started our first Bible club just right across the street here at Powell High School. Our teacher sponsor there, Mr. McPherson, has been the sponsor for 22 years uh, since we started. He just retired, and so that's really a kind of a foundational legal standpoint that we have. So the First Amendment we have, 1984, the Equal Access Act, and also this court case in 1991. So know the law, understand the law. Number five, what's the purpose? We talked about the goal, getting the gospel in there to the schools, reaching teenagers that maybe won't come to your youth group and your churches. But what's the purpose? And I believe this is the great purpose. We in our Bible clubs have a twofold purpose. Number one, it's a time for prayer. And number two, it's a time for Bible teaching. And so that's what we go into the schools for. We, we, we tell everyone, hey, will you come to our Bible club? We have a time of prayer and we have a, a time of Bible lesson. And it's pretty short. Now, there's so many other things. There's other religious organizations sometimes that go on there. But that's our uh, twofold purpose that kind of maybe stands out. And really, with that being said in mind, our purpose of being in the schools or having a Bible club is getting teenagers to reach teenagers and getting students to reach students. Um, I, I go to a lot of these schools. I've been to many of them, uh, all of them, about in our, in our county, visiting principals and schools and teachers. And I look different. Just look at me. Um, kind of goofy looking, Asian, six foot, wear a shirt and tie. I go into these schools, and sometimes I talk to students, and you know what? They just look at me and like, uh, or sometimes they just don't even pay attention to me because I'm not one of them. 
um, sometimes I've, I go to the school here. Uh, for several weeks, there was a young man named Dylan. I, I, I just try to meet students there, and he'd always be at the same place. I never would really respond to me at all. I'd, I'd try to strike up conversation. He'd always stand against the wall. He had long hair, always dressed in black, kind of a unique guy. Not many friends, it seems like. And every week I'd go by, I finally got his nail and said, Dale and I just want to invite you to our Bible club again this morning. We're meeting here in about seven minutes, Mr. McPherson's room, give him the details. And he would never respond to me. Then uh, I, I come to find out there was a young man uh, that came to our Bible club who was friends with that individual. And one morning uh, we, I was there and they were together. And Dylan kind of opened up, not necessarily to me, but to his friend. And I, we were able to kind of communicate because uh, because of his friend. Uh, there's another story. One time we were coming into our Bible club and we had, I don't know, 10, 13 students in our Bible club, kind of a lower morning at Powell High School. And I had a project. We've been going through a series of lessons about um, being a witness and reaching your friends for Christ. We came into the Bible club that morning and I said, we're going to meet for about three minutes. They said, what? And I said, I've got a project. We're going to have a word of prayer. I want to share a Bible verse with you. And then I've got a project for you that I want you to take, uh, take part of. Uh, kind of a homework assignment. They were like, what's going on? So uh, I said, here's, here was kind of the gist of it. I said, we're going to pray, have our, our Bible verse, our thought, but I want you to go out and invite at least two other people to come back into the room to have a word of prayer. I said, now you have three minutes to do that. I said, now don't leave and be gone forever. I want you to come back in three minutes. I said, uh, I'll go out. The students here will go out. The teacher will go out, but we're going to try to invite two, uh, at least two other uh, young people to come. I said, think, think about your friends, where they're at right now, in the cafeteria, in the gymnasium, coming off the bus, whatever the case. And here's something that's pretty In the matter of three minutes, we went from having 13 to 30. In the matter of three minutes. Now, there was a lot of other people out in the schools, but how did that take place? Was it because I was, you know, giving out biscuits or giving out donuts? No. Here's how it took place. And here's the purpose. The teenagers there at the school were reaching their friends. And I believe that's a great purpose. Uh, they're not going to come all for me, but if we can get young people in their school reaching other young people, that's the key. And so I hope you'll keep that in mind. That's the purpose. Number six here, just a few thoughts. Showing interest. You said, I am interested. I want to reach the kids. I want to give out the gospel. No, here's what I'm trying to say. Show an interest in that school. Uh, get involved. Go to a basketball game. Go to a football game. Uh, find out who the principal is and just introduce yourself as someone in the community that, concern, that is concerned, but be involved. For example, um, the high school here, the football team uh, has an annual golf tournament, and for many years, we just sponsor that golf tournament. Now, it takes a few hundred dollars to put a sign up to get uh, some of the people from our college and from our church involved, but uh, they're trying to reach out, but uh, it's, it's great because it just shows that you're interested in what they're doing. And so show interest in what's going on. So there's, uh, you know, a parade for the school or a, a band competition. If you're, you know, enjoy music, if there is a, a choir concert or whatever it may be. But show interest in the school because if you want them to be interested in what you're doing, you need to show interest in what they're doing. And so that's something that's very important. I think sometimes we are so narrow-minded about, you know, here's what they need to do. Here's what we want them to be involved with. Well, get involved in what they're doing. Um, we have an opportunity here to go to the to school and many of the schools and send tutors and to help, to read and different things. And so the school here at Powell High School, they know that the people at Temple Baptist Church and Crown College is very involved in, in, what, in, in, in what's going on at their school. And so show an interest there. That's something to keep in mind. Number seven, uh, schedule a time to meet with the administrator. Schedule a time to meet with the administrator. And this is the phrase that I would recommend that you would use. This is really from the Equal Access Act. Uh, after you get a few things lined up, when you meet with the administrator, this is something you want to keep in mind. We're trying to start another extracurricular activity. You're not doing something completely foreign. You're not promoting your church, but you're just trying to get another extracurricular activity in that school. So, uh, schedule a time. And of course, uh, several things to keep in mind after you have information, uh, you've got things lined up, um, you know, about meeting with the administrator. Uh, you know, you want to look nice, you want to, you know, have information and be ready to meet with the administrator. And so try to keep that in mind. Number eight, uh, here's just a suggestion. Start in a middle school and not a high school. Um, usually middle school kids, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, uh, they're a little more receptive and open to what's going on, and usually attendance-wise, you'll uh, have a bigger group. And if you can get it started in the middle school first, that's a good idea. Now, you don't have to do that, but that's a good idea, start in middle school before you go into high school. Number nine, what are some people to work with? 
Number nine, what are some people to work with? Um, usually there's three groups of people that you want to keep in mind. The administrator, the teacher, and then the students. And most people, if they're going to start a Bible club uh, in a school, uh, they're usually going to, go try to the, they're going to try to go to the very top. I talked to you about scheduling a time with the administrator. Uh, starting with the administrator, the school teacher, and then the students. I would recommend you going the opposite way. Start with the students, then the teachers, then go to the administrator. I think that's very important. If I were to go to a certain place and start a Bible club, that's where I would start. I would start with the young people. So what are the young people? Think about the young people in your youth group. How many of you go to a public school? That's pretty amazing. How many of you are in a Christian school? How many of you are in homeschool? How many of you are out of school? How many of you hate school and wish you were out? That's the rest of you. Uh, that's a big group of you. Uh, I, some of you youth leaders in here, I would start with the young people in your youth group. Uh, find out where they go to school and start with them. Um, so start with the young people. You say, well, we don't have any young people that go to a public school. Well, think of maybe someone that's a, uh, that's a, a local, a, a church uh, that's like-minded. Uh, start with the young people in that school. Uh, try to get young people there you can, you can work with. I'll give you kind of an example here. Uh, this past uh, January, we had, every year we have a faithful men's banquet where all the men in our church meet together, and we kind of have a big emphasis uh, for the beginning of the year. And this past year, I was sitting at a table um, with a young man and his dad who does not go to our church, uh, goes to a, a Baptist church down the road. And, of course, I just uh, was interested in who he was, just trying to uh, strike up a conversation and find out that he goes to a school that we didn't have a Bible club in. And he actually said, Brother Tony, I'd like to start a Bible club in that school. I said, I'd love to help you. And I said, here's a few thoughts for you to kind of get a Bible club started. Here's some things to keep in mind. So I gave him two or three ideas. Here's what he did. He went back to the school. He kind of got a petition himself and got students to fill, sign up to be involved in a Bible club that he wanted to start. He found three teachers in that school that he knew were Christians that would sponsor that Bible club. And he brought all that information back to me. And I didn't have to do anything. From there, I contacted the principal, introduced myself, and she said, I've heard about what this young man's doing. The teachers have talked to me. I'd love for you to start a Bible club in our school. It was pretty simple. I didn't do anything. That young man really did all the work. And this past school year, we started a Bible club there at South Dole Middle School. And we averaged uh, every Friday morning probably 40, 50 kids every morning at that Bible club, all because of that one young man. He was in eighth grade. Now he's getting ready to go in ninth grade. But the teachers are involved. It's really been encouraging. But it all started not with me going to the administrator, Ms. Blevins. It actually started with that student who worked with teachers. And then from there, we went to administrators. So when I went to meet with the principal, I kind of gave her a list of names of students, the teachers, uh, the scheduling of what would work, because the teachers found out, hey, you know what, Monday's not a good morning because we have staff meeting. Tuesday, they have the, uh, you know, whatever the other club is meeting. Uh, Wednesday, the auditorium is being used for this. And so I went and I presented all these things to Ms. Blevins. and said, hey, I've talked to the student, the teacher's here, and we thought Friday would be a good idea. Can I come and help with that? She said, that sounds great. Looks like you've done your research and... Uh, in a matter of two weeks, we were in the school starting a Bible club. And so here's what I'm trying to tell you. Start with the students, then start with the teachers. Uh, you say, uh, well, we don't know any teachers. We don't have any connections. Think of the people in your church. Is there a teacher in your church that teaches at one of the schools? Uh, maybe there's a teacher your uh, um, uh, there's a teacher at your church that uh, has a sister that teaches in one of the schools or maybe one of their neighbors who's a good friend. Just try to uh, kind of broaden your thinking. You don't have to have a teacher at your church. Uh, we have a few teachers in our uh, church that is our Bible club sponsor, but for the most part in our schools, we don't have uh, people that are closely associated with us. And so we had to kind of just make connections. So that's some things to keep in mind there. And then from there, you want to pro approach the administration, the principal. Usually it's an assistant principal, but you want to kind of uh, talk to them. If you go without being prepared and doing your research and having things lined up, most of them are not going to give you any time. They're busy people. Um, they're very busy people. They're trying to, you know, make sure kids are passing their classes. They're trying to break up fights and they're trying to keep their school in order. And so you as an outsider coming in, they're not going to give you much time. And so that's why it's very important to go back in mind, keep building a relationship, showing interest. You know, if you show up and they, they know that they know your face and your name already, what you're doing, they're probably going to be a lot more open to you. And so that's something to keep in mind there. So those are some people that you, that you want to work with there. And then, um, um, with that being said, too, there are a lot of people that you're going to help. Of course, you're going to help the Christian, Christians that are in that school, the young people. 
uh, building, uh, uh, you know, having time of fellowship and time, uh, Bible study, accountability. You're helping the students. You're helping the Christian teachers there, and also you're helping the lost people. Uh, I'm just thinking of a young man uh, who sent me a text actually yesterday. Uh, he's the quarterback of the football team, and he's the all-star baseball player. He's going to be a senior this year. I met him when he was a sophomore, and is uh, just a solid kid. Uh, you would think he's a popular kid, kind of has everything going for him. He makes good grades. He stays out of trouble. He's from a good family. He gives all of his energy to sports and athletics. And I remember meeting him on the football team, invited him to a Bible club, and he just came. I was kind of surprised. And ever since then, he comes about every week. His name's Hagen. He sent me a text. Um, I think, was it uh, this past two Christmases ago, I kind of just had a burden for him. I said, Hagen, I said, I appreciate you coming and kind of we were texting, building a relationship. I, it was after school one day, right before Christmas. I said, Hagen, you mind if I just take you out for, for lunch? He said, that'd be great. So his car was broke down. And so I picked him up from school. We went out to eat. Of course, my whole purpose was to see if he was saved. And uh, taking him home, I said, hey, let me ask you. I said, let me ask you a little bit about your family. I said, do you guys go to church anywhere? And family's not in church. And, and uh, long story short, uh, before I left his driveway, he bowed his head, closed his eyes, and he asked the Lord Jesus Christ to come into his heart. And he made a profession of faith. And he's been faithful. He's come to church here a few times. Family's still uh, not reached. But uh, we're trying to reach the lost there, give them the gospel. And so uh, that's just one story. Many young people this past school year, give you s numbers, um, I don't have them right off the top of my head. I think one week we had over 1,600 young people attending a Bible club. We had a big push and a promotion uh, that week. Um, this past school year, I think we had over 300 young people make a profession of faith. Um, so encouraging. Now, does all of them, did all of them come to our church and walk the aisle? No. A lot of them have churches that they went to. Um, so that's something to keep in mind there. Those are people that you're working with. And number 10, uh, very last thing here. I think this is something that we've worked on and built. Um, but try to have a special activity or have special meetings when you can get a Bible club started. And this kind of goes into it. But make a big deal, you know, um, whether it's uh, just having a sp specific promotion for your Bible club, um, you know, having pizza day for everyone that attends, having uh, special ideas and incentives. Uh, one year over at Powell High School here, we got permission from the staff and faculty. We had an all-night lock-in for our Bible club and invited everyone from the school to come. Now, we didn't have hundreds of people. We reached a lot of people who never came to the Bible club, but through that, we were to get contacts and follow up with them. Two things that we do every year with our Teens for Christ ministry is um, um, in the springtime, we usually have a what we call a Teens for Christ crusade. And in all our Bible clubs, we invite them to one central location at a school. And we invite teachers and principals to come. And we kind of have one big rally where we kind of give the gospel out. And from there, we have people that sign up, have contacts that we follow up with. Um, and then number two, we have a big Teens for Christ sponsor banquet. And that banquet is just for the administration, the pr teachers. And um, you can have it wherever you want. We have it here at Crown College. But we tell all the people there that are connected with the Knox County Schools, we invite all the principals and assistant principals, whether they come to the Bible Club or not. But we just want to tell them thank you and to show our appreciation uh, to them. So those are just some thoughts there about starting a Bible Club. I hope those are helpful. I brought uh, just a few emails here I just wanted to read with you. Um, let's see, this is the principal from, uh, from Powell High School. He just randomly sent, sent me an email. And, you know, it's taken some time. It, did, it didn't happen overnight, but we've built a really good relationship with the people at Powell High School here. Uh, the principal, I have his cell phone number. He calls me. He texts me. We, we're in contact with that. But it doesn't happen just in a week's period or even a year. As a matter of fact, it's taken us 22 years to build a really good relationship here at Powell High School. But the principal, Ken Dunlap, he said, Tony, funny how God works, period. I was just talking about you today and how maybe you can help. One of our teachers came to me and said a student was professing his faith in Christ and she was wanting to get him a good study Bible. I told her I was not sure how that could get misinterpreted from a school standpoint and that I knew someone that might be able to intercept this pass and help her out. So would you have access to a good study Bible and would you like to meet the young man and teacher? Thanks, Ken Dunlap. And uh, that's just, you know, it just, most principals aren't going to contact you, but because of what we've started, what we're doing, and our involvement at the school, I'm glad the principal could think of someone 
that's connected with his school and his life that he could kind of recommend. And so I was able to meet that student and also that teacher. So that's something that's really encouraging here. Uh, principal from Carnes Middle School this past year uh, wrote this, Tony, thank you for the wonderful celebration of Teens for Christ on Tuesday at Crown College. It was a delightful evening from the, good, from the food and fellowship to the lovely surroundings. And just, we have people that volunteer to help. Daniel Stover has been a great leader for our club, and we're so proud of our teacher sponsor, Coach Bob Henry, for being with the club at Farragut Middle School for so many, for so many years. I wish you a wonderful weekend and terrific summer. Heather Carnes, Principal of Middle, Farragut Middle School. And so, it's such a great open door. Our pastor has said this so many times. One of the greatest mission fields in our country is the public school and is, is, and is reaching teenagers. Um, and I hope that you'll keep that in mind. You know, we, we have preachers that get up and talk about going uh, and sharing the gospel. What about the place that is like five minutes from your house, the school? Uh, Powell High School here has 1,400 students. Many of you raise your hand that go to a public school. What about reaching the students in your school? Forget going to Africa. Just go to your classmates and a great way is to start a Bible club. And so some of you that are here that are in a public school, I hope that you'll catch this burden. Find some other Christians in your school there. They don't even have to be from your church. And go and find a teacher and ask them to help maybe sponsor the Bible club and find some times. And God could use that. And then, of course, ask your youth leader, Sunday school teacher, uh, people in your church to help volunteer to come be a part of that. And I hope that you'll keep that in mind. So it's a great door and a great opportunity to have. And so we're very thankful for the opportunity and uh, the privilege that we have to be in these schools and have these Bible clubs there. So 